good afternoon. As promised, I am coming to you live today to show you how to paint with just one of our um, awesome furniture paint products that we have. Uh, today I will be showing you how to paint with our Fusion Mineral Paint. So, I've got my Fusion shirt on because things that match are all happy. Uh, at New Vintage we stock three different types of furniture paint. We have our Fusion Mineral Paint, we have our Sweet Pickens Milk Paint, and we also have our Ultimate Finish. So it's my goal over the next few weeks to show you each of these products and talk to you about what role they have, um, what makes them individual, what makes them unique, um, and try and um, explain to you why I stock three different paint products. But today we'll be focusing on the Fusion Mineral Paint. So I have this awesome little buffet sideboard here. Um, I'm going to show you from start to almost finish uh, what it takes to paint something like this. So I have a whole heap of new followers on the page and I'm aware of the fact that you might not know about these products. So if you do already know about them, bear with me. Um, just enjoy the process. But if you don't know about them, and this becomes too overwhelming, send me a message, shoot me an email, pop into the shop. I can walk you through the steps so that you can paint your own furniture and have success just like I am about to with this one. Sorry, I'll get this in the right spot. So the first thing is the fact that this already has come to me. It's really nice, smooth surface. Um, I'm not one to... Um, to too much prep so I will buy pieces of furniture that come to me already with a beautiful surface to start with if your surface had flaky varnish or previous paint that's quite rough or even a paint that has a lot of gloss on it or it's a lemon X or it's a glass or it's a metal whatever it is that you're painting you may need to do more steps than what I'm about to do but probably 99% of the time this is all you need to do so this is some sort of this isn't solid, the top's solid, but this isn't. So it's got a little bit of a sheeny resist to it. But what I'm going to do, the first thing is, I've given it a dust down, so it's still got a little bit of dust on it, but I've given it a light dust down. I'm going to use our Fusion TSP. So this TSP is kind of like a sugar soap, but the biggest difference between ours and your regular sugar soap is that this one is phosphate free. Try saying that a hundred times over. The fact that it's phosphate free means no chemicals. I do not sell a single product in store that has a chemical in it. It's something I'm very passionate about. No chemicals. Because it has no chemicals, it means that once you've washed it on, you don't have to wash it off. With a normal sugar soap, you wash it on. You then need to wash it off because the chemical can be a resist to the paint that you're about to put on there. So this is two of these tiny caps to a litre. I think it is, to one litre of water. So I've just put a tiny splash of my TSP and diluted it down with water. And I have myself a chucks rag. And this is just damp already. So my first job is just to wipe this down. Now, the fact that my seal on here is a little bit red, I'm going to avoid sanding at all costs because my fear is if I do any sort of sanding on this breaking through the varnish on this surface could actually mean that I get a bleed through so a bleed through is kind of looks like you've left a coffee ring on the surface and that's what happens when you break through the existing surface that's on here this TSP is a degreaser and a degrimer and it's a really good thorough cleaner. This is probably just as, as important as a light sand. So I'll keep talking while that dries. It might take a while to dry because we're in the cool, um, outside in the cool shed. Once you've done that and it's um, dry and ready to go, you then need to choose your paint product and you need to choose your paint brush. So like I said, today I'm using Fusion Mineral Paint. The only reason I've chosen this is because I absolutely love this colour. It's an ingle nook and it's the colour of my counter in shop. Hi everyone, I can see how many of you are watching. I'm going to get nervous now. 
Um, so I've chosen my Fusion Mineral Paint. Now, this is my brush. These are our Klingon brushes. I've got an R14. If you were painting this product, I would actually, sorry, this piece, I would actually get you to buy a bigger brush. Probably the um, 035 um, or even an F40, but I can help you with your brushes. Now, all of these products are available online. So I can see Karen saying hello from Wollongong, hello. Um, you don't have to be local. Jump on the website, newvintage.com.au and we ship Australia wide, flat rate of $13.50. So you can take advantage of that and buy everything that you need. If you don't know what you need, send me a photo of your project and I will help you get everything that you need for a successful finish. Okay, so I've got my Klingon brush. As the name suggests, the Klingon brush really clings onto your paint. What does that mean? It means that you're going to get a nice amount of paint on your brush. It means that it's going to give you a really nice um, coverage and that means less paint in the end because you'll need to do less coats because there'll be less brush marks. I kind of relate it back to, um, so your Fusion Mineral Paint is a really good quality furniture paint. If you're going to buy a really good paint, you want to buy a really good brush. I relate it back to if you're going to buy makeup. So I wouldn't go buy a Napoleon foundation and go to Kmart and get an applicator, a makeup applicator from Kmart. It is worth the investment and they're only about $29 I think for the brush. Alright, now this is really starting to look dry. It's a bit more dry over here. So I load my brush up. I've already painted the drawers. But you can see I've got a fair amount of paint on my brush there. Now your first coat you might be a little bit disappointed with as far as if you've got a dark colour to start with, like I do, it's going to take you more coats to get a really nice finish. If I was to go to the hairdresser and say that I want my hair to be blonde, it wouldn't happen in one appointment and it wouldn't happen with one lot of product. It would take me more product and more time. If you've got a darker surface and you're going a light colour, it's going to take more product and more time. Generally two coats is enough, you may have to do the third coat. Just depends on what surface you've got and what finish you're going for. Alright, so I'm actually really quite a rough painter. So I kind of lay my paint on. I'm painting in our shed today, so I can be super rough. So I kind of lay the paint on. If this was summer and the paint would dry a lot quicker, I probably wouldn't go this far. I would do two or three centimetres and then come back and um, do my longer strokes. Because we're in winter, I have a longer open time. Now I'm just going to lean in front of you. So just excuse me, just to make sure I get in there. Hello Lisa, the lovely Lisa. So tell me where you're coming from, uh, where you're from. Tell me how your day's been. So as you see, once I get the paint laid on there, I kind of then go back over and do long one stroke. So lay my paint on quite rough. I've got a few bobbly bits here. My pot's getting old. A few dry bits. Again, lay my paint on rough and then I come back top to bottom. Try and do one stroke and see how it just evens out the consistency and the application of the paint. Get down here. Now the paint on the garage floor isn't an issue for me. My husband gave up on caring a long time ago. But if that is something that's going to be a problem for you, just pop some cardboard underneath your feet, the feet of your surface. Okay, now I just want to make sure I'm going to go along under here and just make sure I get these little bits. So once you've done that first application, 
you want to wait at least two to four hours. I would normally wait overnight just because I can and that's what I like to do. And then you need to do your second coat. So your second coat will generally be enough, like I said. On this piece, it will be enough. Um, I already can tell by that coverage that it's going to be enough. And then after you've done your second coat, you need to actually let the paint cure. So the curing time is the time that it takes for just your pigment, oops, just your pigment to be left behind. It's the time that it takes for the water to evaporate away, so all you're left with is the paint product. Once you've done that and the curing time, I would say generally seven to 10 days. So if you can leave your piece sit for seven to 10 days, this one I'd leave the drawers all open. You don't want the painted drawers to be on your painted framing. Um, after seven to 10 days, you can generally start using it. Now, if it is a high traffic area like, let me just turn you around a bit, um, a high traffic area such as a kitchen, um, kids furniture, coffee table, anything that's going to get a lot of use, it is suggested that you wait a full 28 day curing time. Now I know that can be a really big problem for some people, particularly if I say, okay, you're allowed to paint your dining suite, now you need to have no dining suite for 28 days. If that's a really big problem, there is ways around it, but I can actually suggest that you use a different product of ours. And that would be our Lacentals Ultimate Finish. So there's just one example of why I stock more than just the one product. But I'm, I will go ahead now and I will finish this. Once it's painted and it's cured, that's it. It's done. Like It's literally done. Um, if you like, you can put a seal over it. So you could put a tough coat sealer over it for protection. Sometimes, actually a lot of the times, I choose to put a wax of some sort over it. Fusion Mineral Paint has a built-in sealer. That means you don't have to put a wax or an oil over it. The protective coat is built into the paint and we love that because it's one less uh, step that you have to do and it's one less product that you have to buy. But a lot of the times I find that the, the piece of furniture looks like I've been painted. Um, and because I like the old antique furniture like this one with the beautiful Queen Anne legs, I generally like it to look a little bit more from its era. So I will put a dark wax or a dark oil wax over it. But I might try and come back and show you that tutorial. Um, depends on how my kids are going this afternoon. I might come back and show you the second coat or at least send you a photo to show you what the second coat looks like. Um, I'll leave it there. I'll keep painting. Any questions, just you can ask on here even though you haven't joined us for the live or if you think about it after you've watched the live. Just shoot me through any sort of questions. Remember, there's a whole lot of knowledge on my website, newvintage.com.au, and that's where you can buy all the products and look at all the colours, or in-store. We're on Barolan Street across from the NAB Bank in the CBD of Bundaboo. I hope this has helped. Enjoy your Monday. Bye.